Infamous Second Son is an open world superhero game and the third in the series from Sucker Punch Productions. Set seven years after the last game, superpower wielding humans known as conduits are being branded as bioterrorists and hunted down by an organization known as the Department of Unified Protection, or DUP, to placate a frightened public. You play as Delson, who is part of a fictional Native American tribe. He wears a beanie. He also likes making street art, which is weirdly the first thing you actually do in the game, in an awkward motion controller kind of sequence. Hex, over the years we have played a lot of douchebag protagonists in our video games. We've played the unlovable writer Alan Wake. I can't believe I was actually happy to see you. We've partied with the losers in Test Drive Unlimited 2. And who could forget having to rescue these bunch of idiots in Far Cry 3? So much douche. So much douche. But never before have I disliked a douchebag as quickly as Delson. So, Eugene. My brother, what do you say? You and me, a couple conduits, we hit the town, you teach me some of those video tricks, I teach you how to pick up girls, and we take our power to the people. I don't know, Hex, maybe I've just got a low tolerance for douchebaggery, but just everything he said grated on my ears. I gotta power up if I'm gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Concrete Queen. At one point, I even turned the sound off for a while just so I didn't have to listen to his rambles. I, mean, I think you might be exaggerating a little bit. I mean, yeah, he is pretty terrible, but he's not that bad. Well, one thing this place tells us is that our sniper is a sniperette. It is definitely the best-smelling assassin's den you could ever be in. Yeah, he's pretty bad. <laughs> I think what they've tried to do is set him up as a cocky rebel, a fighter of causes. The problem is, if not handled correctly, it's very easy for a character like this to just become annoying. And it's not helped that most of the writing in Second Son is quite cheesy, even just plain bad at times. We, we hit the town, we load up at the all-you-can-leech conduit power buffet, we maybe swing by the Space Needle, always wanted to see it, and then we're back home to save some lives. And that's disappointing because the game has such high production values in every other way. Yeah, I think the narrative problems begin with Delson's initial motivation, which is pretty weak, especially in contrast to the actions he does in the game. The story begins with a prisoner transport crash that sees the escape of some conduits. Delson soon discovers he can absorb conduit abilities. Then it's up to him and his equally annoying sheriff brother to attempt to bring down the game's villain, Augustine. So Delson's first motivation is to obtain the concrete power so he can then use that power to remove the concrete from the limbs of his tribe members who you haven't actually met bar one. The only, the only way it's kidding out is with the same power, I get it. I don't get it. It just doesn't have the same comic book feel to the last two games. Well, I quite liked the setup. I mean, instantly you both fear and hate Augustine for the way she's treated the tribe. She is bad news, and over time you're driven to take her down. You can't do this, you crazy! I've got rights! And I have the legal authority to suspend those rights whenever I feel it's necessary, like now, for instance. I think the bigger problem is how they've handled a character that can choose a good or evil path. If you do go evil, your sheriff brother obviously doesn't like the fact that you've become a mass murderer, but it doesn't have a huge effect on your relationship. I told you to sneak around They them. started it! Do you wonder why people hate bioterrorists? You still bumble about on missions with him. And we have left off. Hey, hey, follow my phone! And don't be a dick! I think if you can ignore all the clumsy storytelling, then there is some solid action to be had here. And visually, it's just incredible. It's one of the best looking next gen games I've seen yet. Oh, it's stunning, isn't it? I was actually surprised that the PS4 could do this kind of detail. Mm. The facial motion capture in particular is beautiful, and you can even see the tendons moving under their skin. I have to go back to my office. Apparently, I'm getting a phone call. Plus, I'm so glad they've kept that beautiful graphic novel style for the cutscenes. They knew what the government would do to people like me, and they did it anyway. The second sun is set in the small US city of Seattle, and you do see some nice sunsets and rainy weather, even a coffee shop or two. I love how they've crafted this world. It's such a crisp and shiny city with such interesting construction and layout, and when you see it from afar, you can't help but put the controller down and just soak it in for a bit. It just looks stunning, doesn't it? And the particle effects, Hex. Oh, I was in floaty, explodey, dusty bit heaven. Normally I find it's things like lighting and smoke that puts pressure on gaming systems and slows it all down, but this was an orchestra of light, particles of movement, and it all just worked and flowed without skipping a beat. Moving throughout the world is a joy as well. The controls are so responsive and finely tuned, whether Delson's fighting, climbing, or flying about. 
And of course, there's lots of goons and encampments to take out to really let you stretch out your superpower legs. No, no, no! Delson slowly acquires quite a repertoire of different conduit powers. You can switch between these abilities on the fly by feeding off objects in your environment. So if you're using smoke, which has good evade manoeuvres and damage, you'll need to find a smokestack or a smoking car to recharge. But if you want to run up walls, you'll need to find a neon sign, suck it out and boom, you're a speedy disco. It's easy to scale buildings and get around with any ability set. And I do like that mechanic of having to search for a smokestack or neon to recharge in the middle of a fight. Yeah, and it's nice to have that variety. There are some solid enemy types too. Heavy concrete goons are thrown into the mix, which will make a standard fight suddenly more stressful. And all their concrete shields and abilities are just awesome to look at and fight against. The game only has a handful of boss fights, but I found them pretty enjoyable. I don't think any of the missions that you go on were particularly innovative or original, though. I'm not gonna hurt you! You do have to track down a couple of conduits here and there, but the bulk of the missions are fighting the DUP, and I just found all of that so repetitive, Hex. Yeah, but I think the combat is good enough to pull you through. Plus, I like that your approach to a fight is really quite different depending on whether you choose good or evil. If you're good, you'll need to be more cautious and carefully subdue enemies, causing as few casualties as possible. If you pick the evil path, it's all about missiles and explosions and executions. Personally, I think the good path is more fun and more strategic, Bajo. Yeah, me too, but there is that reckless abandon of being the bad guy. There are a couple of other abilities that you pick up along the way, which we won't spoil for you, but they are very fun. I didn't like the tech trees much, though. I just felt they were a bit too restrictive and too linear in how they unlock, like I was just going through the motions. When I got to the end of the game, I wondered what was the point if so much stuff is going to be locked off, just fill it out for me. I don't know, I think that's a playstyle choice though. I mean, if you really take your time and collect as many shards as possible before you upgrade, then you're going to have way more choices to make. I really liked that the good and evil actions you make in the game, both in gameplay and cutscene, also play into what abilities you can unlock. It's great to have that difference. Yeah, and you know, as tired as a concept it is to have to go and hunt for all those hidden shinies around the world in a game like this, I did enjoy hunting down those bar shards. Ugh, yeah, me too. Every time you see one, you've just got to alter your course to pick it up. Yeah, especially if they're flying on a drone. Come here, you. But Hex, even though there are so many good parts to this game, you know, that impressive combat and those beautiful visuals, I just didn't really have that much fun with it. And I started to feel like this with Infamous 2 as well. Maybe I'm just getting a bit tired of this crackdown-like superhero inner city formula. And there's just not that much that's remarkable about this city besides how beautiful it is, and the citizens derp out a fair bit. <laughs> yeah, the civilian AI is pretty basic. You especially notice it if you're playing the good side. They love and cheer you constantly one minute. But if you injure someone, they run off and cower in fear. Then 10 seconds later, those same people are all cheering for you again. I want to have your babies! I really struggled scoring this hex because it is such a beautiful game and everything just works so well, yet it's still incredibly formulaic, so I'm giving it 7 out of 10 rubber chickens. I mean, sure there are things it could have done better, but I was really won over by this gorgeous playground. And that fluid combat just lets you revel in having superpowers and I had a lot of fun, so I'm giving it 8. 